now, let's begin our process of evaluation. We start with the explore quadrant. What are the costs of doing poorly in this quadrant? Poor performance in the explore quadrant limits you from the very beginning in what is possible with your customers. Poor performance leaves you vulnerable to competitors who do a better job exploring new possibilities for the future. And poor exploration can expose you to embarrassing and costly situations later where your lack of preparation and understanding is revealed. There are many examples of mistakes made by multinational corporations who did not take the time to fully explore local markets when they introduced new products overseas. Here are a few examples I read about recently on the internet. The Ford Motor Company launched their car called the Pinto in Brazil. Sales were flat. They didn't realize that Pinto in Brazil is slang for tiny male genitals. They later took off the nameplates and changed the name of the car to Corcel, which means horse. Sales took off. General Motors made a similar mistake with their Chevy Nova in South America. Nova means won't go, and sales didn't. GM later changed the car's name to Carib. When Coca-Cola launched their famous drink in China, the Chinese characters chosen in the United States to represent Coca-Cola actually translated in China to read bite the wax tadpole. New characters were later chosen to represent happiness in the mouth. If these are the dangers, then what are the benefits that come with exploring very well? Well, first, new possibilities are open that can lead to more and better business. Second, Greater understanding is forged with a tone in the relationship that lets your customers know you are open to listen, willing to change, and eager to grow. What characterizes world-class performance in this quadrant? Number one, a mood of openness and possibilities permeates the organization. Everywhere, people seek to make new things happen, not find reasons that the same old thing must endure. We've never done it that way before, but uh, let's give it a try. That's the sound of a world-class organization. We've never done it that way before, and there must be a good reason. <laughs> That's the sound of an organization closed to innovation, closed to new ideas, and closed to healthy exploration. Number two. Throughout your organization, there is a common understanding of the benefits that come from vigorous exploration. Everyone in the organization sees the purpose and value of being open-minded and asking lots of questions. They understand this is the starting point for successful performance later on. Number three, the purpose and benefits of exploration are shared with your customer. Your staff take the time to set customers at ease about the intent and purpose of the exploration process. Patiently, your customer is shown what you intend to do with the insights and ideas that emerge. You show customers how this will help them to form the agreement, shape the process of delivery, and guarantee the assurance process. In world-class organizations, a sense of mutual enthusiasm grows between customers and suppliers working together to find new and better ways for the future. And finally, number four, vigorous application of best practices. World-class organizations are not arrogant. They don't think they have all the answers. They are eager and ready to learn from others, benchmarking the best both inside and outside of their industries. So what are some of the best practices to look for in the Explore Quadrant? One, there is a structured process to ensure exploration is properly and thoroughly done. Now this can include special times set aside for exploration conversations. 
let's face it, it can be very hard to maintain an open-minded mood of exploration during regular meetings that are normally dedicated to past performance review or to current works in progress. An agenda should be circulated in advance, giving participants a chance to think and prepare their thoughts and their questions. Finally, the participants in these exploration conversations should come from all areas of your organization and from your customer's organization as well. Exploration is not only for those in marketing. It should be fully embraced by selected members of all your teams and departments. Number two, competent, well-trained people are engaged in the exploration process. These people are trained in active listening, building rapport with customers, and using a structured process to respectfully discover concerns, aspirations, and needs. Number three, there is a commitment to mutual disclosure. Exploration is not a one-way street. It's not an exercise to find out how much you can about them. Instead, there's a balanced commitment to share information with the customer. Yes, you want to learn about them, but you also want to educate them about your own organization, your capabilities, investments, new directions, past experiences, and even your prior mistakes. Number four, mechanisms exist to document the results of your exploration and feed forward the information to other people inside, others who can use this information to help them do a better job in the agree, deliver, and assurance process. Now here's the really important question for you to ask and answer with your colleagues and then with your customers. How well are you exploring right now? How good is your approach? How well are you deploying that approach? And how valuable and consistent are the results you are getting from your efforts to engage, discuss, and explore?